Thank you. Yes, sir. Richard Holliver with the Consumer Federation of California, also in strong support of the bill. Thank you very much. Are there other uh, witnesses in support of SB 95? Seeing none. Are there witnesses in opposition? If there are, please come up to the front table and fill these three chairs. Oh, or over here on the other side is fine, Mr. Moss. All right. Who wants to uh, go first? Uh, with your indulgence, Mr. Chair and members, sure. Brian Moss uh, with the California New Car Dealers Association. Uh, let me state uh, front out from the beginning, we too are opposed to the practice of dealers who do not pay, in, pay off trade-ins that are delivered uh, to a dealer. It is abhorrent. It should never happen. Where we disagree with the author is how to solve that problem. And again, let me be clear, we're opposed to the practice. It's a horrible practice, as you heard from the witnesses earlier. It's something that should never occur. But those dealers who uh, did not live up to their obligations represent a tiny, tiny minority of dealers in the state of California, particularly of the franchise new car dealers that I represent. Again, these consumers, uh, really doesn't matter to them. They were harmed. But it's a problem that uh, we think uh, SB 95 uses a uh, nuclear bomb to take care of rather than a, a, a fine-tuned scalpel to fix. Uh, let me talk to the specifics of the bill. Uh, we have told the author uh, and supported in 2002, in fact, an increase in the dealer bond from $50,000 to $100,000. What we are opposed to is the expansion of the breadth of the scope of claims that can be filed against a bond. Uh, we think that uh, notwithstanding uh, some claims by f some, that it will be very difficult for surety companies to uh, assess the risk inherent in all statutory and contractual claims related to the sale or lease of a vehicle for purposes of understanding how many consumers might file against a bond. That will dramatically increase the price of bonds and will likely exhaust bonds very, very quickly. And in this environment, when new car sales alone are down 25 to 30 percent across the board, across all manufacturers, the last thing dealers need is it to make it more difficult for them to have a bond. A dealer can't operate without a bond. They can't be licensed. They can't sell vehicles without a bond. And if there are too many claims filed against bonds, whether they're valid or not, it's going to be very difficult for them to continue to operate. Again, to be clear. Our association is on record supporting an increase of the bond to $100,000. We are opposed to the expansion in SB 95. Second piece is how to deal with the trade-in problem. Um, many of you voted for SB 729 in 2007, which created the Consumer Motor Vehicle Recovery Fund. Uh, there was some delay, candidly, in getting that fund up and running. That delay is now over. Any consumer, including those you heard testify moments ago, can file a claim with the fund. Uh, I have the notice. I have the claims. I can hand them out to anybody. They're available right now to get uh, compensated if uh, they have uh, not had a trade-in paid off by a dealer since July 1, 2008, uh, when that legislation took effect. Uh, Dealers are paying $1 per car into this fund because uh, they believed in supporting the legislation that this is the best way to make consumers whole. The problem with the approach in SB 95 is it doesn't make consumers whole. It just says we're going to make it much more, considerably more difficult for dealers to transact business. Uh, for instance, what the bill says is that in, before a dealer can sell or transfer a vehicle, uh, the trade-in has to be paid off. Again, we have no argument with that. In fact, we've suggested amendments to the author that if a dealer tenders payment for discharge of an obligation in full, then that should take care of the problem. But instead, the bill goes further, much further. It says that uh, a dealer 
has to notarize the fact that the payment was received by the lien holder and send that notarized statement to the Department of Motor Vehicles before a trade-in can be uh, then sold. We submit that that could take days, weeks, potentially months before a uh, notarized statement is received by DMV and the dealer is notified by DMV that it's been received and then they can go ahead and sell the vehicle. We don't think that's the right approach to solve this problem. We think prohibiting dealers from transferring uh, vehicles until tender of payment has been made is the right approach to the problem and frankly I don't think we're that far away on that point alone. Final point. The author in her approach to this uh, real issue has suggested that providing additional opportunities for consumers to seek redress, whether from uh, the Consumer Legal Remedies Act, uh, expansion of the bond, uh, uh, incidental and accidental, uh, or incidental and uh, other damages, et cetera, is going to allow consumers to go to trial lawyers who will file claims against bonds and dealers. The problem is in the vast, vast, vast majority of instances, the dealer's broke. There's no money for a consumer to get if uh, a, a one of these claims is filed if SB 95 were enacted. Uh, what will give consumers recompense is filing a claim with the Consumer Motor Vehicle Recovery Fund. That's why our dealers are paying a dollar per car for every car sold, and we think that's the best solution. We're willing to meet the Senator halfway to solve the other problems, but unfortunately, this bill is far from halfway, and for that reason, we're strongly opposed. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Moss. Yes, sir, would you like to testify next, please? Thank you, Senator. My name is Tyler Kidd, Corporate Counsel and Government Affairs Manager for CarMax Auto Superstores, Inc. And I'd also like to say at the outset that we think that protecting consumers from the ill effects of a bad economy and from dishonest dealers is a good thing. Having said that, we oppose uh, this legislation because it's actually going to exacerbate the problem that it seeks to resolve. CarMax is the country's largest retailer of used vehicles. We have over 13,000 employees in 26 states and 100 stores. We have 13 stores in California with uh, 1,500 employees and 5,200 cars in our inventory right now. This bill would cost CarMax approximately a million dollars more per month to operate than it does under the current environment. Used cars depreciate an average of $10 per day. They sit on a dealer's lot, be it the front lot or the back lot. If you require a dealer like CarMax, who is an honest, open, and ethical dealer, to hold a car for weeks or months, that depreciation will either be absorbed by CarMax or more likely be passed on to the ultimate consumer. And but that means we would have to pay the consumer less for their trade-in vehicle because we know it's going to depreciate on our lot. Dishonest honest dealers, on the other hand, are not going to be deterred by this bill. They are going to continue to operate in the manner they have before. Honest dealers will either go out of business or they will, uh, th they'll have to find other ways to survive in the current economic environment. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Doring, did you want to testify? Yeah, Mr. Chairman and members, Bill Doring, representing the Independent Automobile Dealers Association of California. We're the non-franchise dealers. And the first thing that I want to say is that the used car dealers are definitely not with the new car dealers on increasing the bond to 100,000. We can barely pay the 50,000 that we have now. But the problem with the bill is that it punishes good dealers and the bad guys, as the council said here, get away. Because the bond, unlike ordinary insurance, you have to qualify for it. So if you've been in business for 20 years, never had a complaint against your bond, but you don't have a lot of liquid assets and they take it to 100,000, you're out of business. I mean, that's a condition of your license is to have that bond. 